Happy Valentine's Day! Ah, oh, can you believe it's February 14th already? This year is already flying by and I wanted to wish you a very happy Valentine's Day. Would you like to be my Valentine? Okay, fine, I accept, yes, thank you. Okay, so this week I found this card, you know, because I'm doing all this decluttering and I've gone through all my office work and paperwork and I found this little card, like this big, and I gotta show it to you, hold on. I don't even know where it came from, I have no idea. I found it in the middle of all these things and I'm just getting rid of stuff. Of course, holding it and saying thank you very much for being in my life, but I found this. It's this little card. And it says on the top, this is my lie, dot, dot, dot. So that's pre-printed. I didn't print that. That was something that came to me and I have no idea where it came from. So I wrote, whenever it was, I have no idea. I pretend I'm not scared and I'm scared shitless. Hmm. It's true. It's true. And uh, it's true to the point that yes, of course, there's things that happen in my life and decisions that I make that scare me. Um, but now, the older I get, um, even though I'm scared, I still do something about it. I still push myself to get to the other side because if I live my life in fear, I will continue to get what I have always had and that is not enough for me. Um, so then I think about, well, you know, what are some really cool things that I've done in my life that kind of took some chutzpah, right? Like, I mean, some, because you forget, you just live your life and you do things and you're like, oh yeah, well, you know, I kind of forgot that I moved across the world and moved to Sweden when I was 43 years old with my cat, Steve, may he rest in peace. Uh, that took a lot. That took a lot of planning. That took a lot of organization, but mostly it took a lot of, um, courage. And now because that was in 2011 and this is 2019, it's like I've forgotten that courage. I've forgotten what courage that took. And when I decided to start my own life coaching business, that in a country which I've never had a business in before, I mean, if this was in America, that would be a different story, but I'm in Sweden. And so Sweden is a completely different place. And how you have a corporation here, there's a lot of legalities, there's a lot of logistics and there's, you know, it took courage and it took me getting out of my own way and little by little, right? Like making these steps, doing something about it and learning more and putting myself out there. I have made hard decisions and you know, it's not ex exactly easy for me to sit and talk to you every week either to put my heart out there. But if I don't do that, then you're never going to know who I am. And if I want you to be my coaching client, I can't expect you just to go, oh, yeah, you know what, come on, you, it's, it's your turn now. Well, it's your turn to tell me everything about your life, but you know nothing about me. Well, no, this is a relationship and we all need relationship, um, I think. So these careers that I've had in my life that have brought me to today, my banking and my real estate and working as a work environment ombudsman in a school and an administrator and human resources. I mean, all those things, they all build up to be who I am today and help me to understand what my strengths are. And yesterday I went to go meet with this incredible girl in my town who um, does logo work and branding work. And we were talking and she's so creative and she's so gifted. And, and by talking to her, she inspired me. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. She had all these beautiful pens in her office. And she's like, if you want, you can borrow them. I'm like, <laughs> I'm a pen thief. So you let me borrow that pen or that stack of pens they'll be gone. You'll never see them again. Never to be seen by you again, dear hearts. They'll be mine. <laughs> and so it was being around her and in her space that made me want to be more creative and made me think, wow, you know, what are the things that I want to brand myself, my colors, my fonts, and all these different things. And, uh, you know, of course I'm putting the cart before the horse, but still, these are great, cool things to think about that put me outside of myself, right? So, a challenge for me in my life has been to fight against myself and feeling that I have to belong. And uh, a struggle that I still work with pretty much every day is recognizing, am I really being who I am? 
or am I being someone who I think you want me to be? And um, when I was five and we moved to America from Sweden, I did not fit in. I can tell you that. I didn't look the same. I didn't act the same. I didn't wear the same clothes. I didn't eat the same food. I didn't... My name. I mean, just my name. Could you imagine? I was bullied for years, harassed for years about my name. Wasa. A-S-A in, in English. Uh, Asa. Asa. Asha. Ass. <laughs> oh, you know, that hurt my feelings for many years. And then it stopped hurting because I realized it really didn't have anything to do with me. It had to do with them. And they were feeling bad about themselves for whatever reason. And it was just fun to make some fun of somebody. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to fit in. I wanted to be... I blend. I want to blend. I wanted to blend in with everybody so that nobody would notice. Because when I stuck out, then it was like all eyes were on me. And I hated it. So today in my own life and in my own career and in my own world with my friends and people I surround myself with I I question myself am I really saying what I want to say right now am I using my own voice am I using my own voice to say what I feel because if I don't then I'm trying to show them a picture of somebody who is not even me and that's not a friend. That's not what a good friend does. And that's not even who I want as a friend. I wouldn't want somebody in my life that didn't want to be real with me. So I don't want to give a picture to somebody uh, of an Asa that is not me. Yeah, that's not authentic. I know that word is completely overused. But you know what? I still use it because I am being authentically me now. And I'm authentically me with you. In front of you here I sit I open up my heart for you so that you can understand me a little bit better to understand maybe there's something inside of you that I have said before that triggers or makes you think wow you know I kind of feel that way too I uh, maybe maybe I try to be something I'm not maybe I try to be someone that I'm not um, and that takes a lot of work that takes a lot of work for me to constantly remind myself what did I just say that for did I just say that because I wanted them to include me? Or did I say that because that's really what I felt? And it still happens. It still happens to me even after all this work that I've done. So I'm certainly by no means pointing a finger at anyone and saying, this is what you need to do. Because I still do it every single day. So this is work, right? Work in progress. And if I've ever said anything in any of my blog posts that pique interest in you, reach out to me, ask me a question. I would love it. I would love it if you just send me a message like, you know what, you said this about money. What did that mean exactly? You know, I'm having some hard times around money. Can you kind of help me organize my thoughts? Absolutely. And even today, I mean, talking about, I pretend I'm not scared and I'm scared shitless. You know, that's, it's true. It's not true. Today it's true. Tomorrow maybe it's not, right? This is, this is something that changes all the time but I still show up every day. I still do the work. I still have to be here, even though it's hard, even though it's hard for me to be vulnerable and show, I don't know everything. I always wanted to think, oh my gosh, I can't let anybody see the real me that I have no idea what they're talking about. You know, coming from a different culture and moving into America, that was really hard, understanding, the, trying to fit in to understand what they're talking about. How do they get lunch in the lunch line? What are you supposed to do when you sit and you talk to people? Uh, you know, my first day at school when I was in first grade, I had no idea that you had to pay for your own lunch. I just went and like I followed people in front of me. I just took a tray and I just kind of kept on walking. This woman's like, uh, excuse me, hello, pay up. I was mortified. I didn't know. I mean, kids in Sweden get free lunch. I didn't know. My mom and dad didn't know, no teacher told me, and I hate to be embarrassed. I was so ashamed that I didn't know. And today, if something like that were to happen, I mean, I get called out all the time on stuff, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> that's true. I fess up real fast because what? what? <laughs> I have nothing to be afraid of. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm just being me, and if I don't know any better, I don't know any better. I can only do what I can do, right? And the same goes for you. So... <laughs> If you have these cool little superpowers of things that you've done in your past, like you've like you changed careers or you 
um, you left your husband because you were actually a lesbian or I mean, <laughs> whatever, whatever your example is. I mean, that takes a lot of courage, it takes a lot of chutzpah and like, wah, oh my God, I'm going to do this. I'm scared shitless, but I'm still going to do it. So I'm going to challenge you today for my Valentine's Day partner, you. <laughs> um, think about five things. Five things that you have done in your life, some badass decisions that you have made that you're like, yeah, and write them down and keep them in front of you. If it's in your day planner, if it's on your computer, and remind yourself how incredibly strong you really are. And, you know, share them. Share them with somebody else too, because when we forget, when we tend to forget, it's good to know that we have our little list to remind ourselves that we are works in progress, right? We don't have to be anything we're not. And remember the things that we have done that are pretty incredible and share them with somebody else like me, your Valentine's Day buddy, because I want to hear, I want to know. So you can either pop a message down below or you can send me a private message. And if you have any questions, I am completely approachable. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I've ever talked about or what coaching is or how I can help you or um, if I've ever talked about something that you, like, what did she even mean by that? So I would love it. Reach out. I would love to hear from you. So please remember, if you don't have somebody that has asked you to be your Valentine today, I just did. You've got me, okay? We've got each other. None of us are alone. So I'm going to leave you with this quote, okay? I'm going to leave you with this quote, and I have to read it because... I'll misquote it if I don't do it. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates us. Mary Ann Williamson. And I wanted to share that with you because when we really shine our own light out to the world and are who we are, then the world reflects that, right? We get what we give. What we need, we get. Yeah? So... We all need each other, and if uh, I can help you with anything, please let me know. It would be my absolute honor, my Valentine's Day buddy. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.